Loman had a really good bluesy lead style that he incorporated what we call fills now in between the vocal parts, you know. He had different things. <laughs> string bending and stuff that was kind of popular in the late 50s and uh, late 40s, early 50s kind of thing. So rather than just a lot of rhythmic playing, which he did also, he no really nice blues licks that are still used today. A lot of the that's one of Loma's licks, but I also hear it in Johnny Winter and Eric Clapton and Stevie Ray and, and that kind of thing. So, I mean, they all took from each other. Rather than the rhythm parts like the other guys would use the chords. You know, he had single kind of licks going on. And like the start of thing, you know. So you just take one string and bend it. And the bending string came a little earlier. The guys, the old blues guys that couldn't play bottleneck slide with the wine bottles like a lot of them did. Uh, they could simulate that sound by bending the string up to the note rather than sliding the bottle up to the note. Each Night before you go to bed, my baby will scroll a little proud for me, my baby, and let's tell all the stars above that this is dedicated to the one I love. You can hear him, you know. You can hear him doing the chords, which he did really well too, but in, in between the vocals. You know, that classic little major lick that's, that's all, it's still used today. Back in those days, I mean, the blues guys had sig signature licks and you didn't steal their guitar licks. It was like stealing their guitar from them. So he, but he had a lot of the little kind of Freddie King sounding thing. I can tell he was a little influenced by Freddie or vice versa. I'm not sure which way it came first, but rather than a lot of, you know, a lot of guys just played rhythm stuff and kind of Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley things were more rhythmic than he had the, he had the chops. Thank you. 